Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in the last few years we've been able to discover life in some of the more remote and more hostile places on the planet. But in this video we're going to be talking about this new discovery where we found life where we really didn't expect any. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Map. In the last three or four years, scientists discovered some of the more extreme life in some of the most extreme conditions on the planet. And some of these discoveries were quite mind-blowing. For example, approximately a year and a half ago, the scientists were able to discover quite a lot of life inside the Earth itself, essentially in the depths of the ground underneath our feet. And some of this life was thriving there. When the scientists tried to calculate how much of actual bacterial biomass was present in the Earth itself, and this is essentially including parts of Earth approximately 5 kilometers below the surface, they realized that there was approximately 300 times more of bacteria inside Earth than the total mass of all of the humans combined. So basically, a lot of new biomass was discovered in locations where we really didn't think anything could survive. As a matter of fact, of all of the investigations we've taken so far, it seems that only one place on Earth has not really yielded any life. And I've actually mentioned this in one of the previous videos as well, but the most hostile environment on the planet seems to be this unusual volcano in Ethiopia, which I've covered in a lot of detail in the video you can find popping up above my head near the end of this video. Here the conditions were just too acidic, too hot, and too extreme for even the most resilient life to survive, but only one of these volcanic lakes was uninhabited. Everything else, however, did have at least some life. But the scientists, whose paper you can find in the description below, got really lucky and they got to use this incredible um, research ship known as Joydis Resolution, which is essentially a science platform. It's a science drilling platform that has been used since 1978 for various types of um, underwater research. Just like every other drilling platform, which usually um, are responsible for discovering all kinds of oil and gas deposits underneath the ocean, this drill is also capable of going under the ocean, into the ocean floor and drilling a few kilometers into it. And for this study, the scientists were able to get approximately uh, 750 meters below the uh, ocean floor, into the location where some of the actual crust was already partially molten and basically it was pretty inhospitable to anything you could imagine. But as you can probably tell from the title of the video, once again we were able to discover life there as well. Now this is a really interesting discovery because in this particular location really no one expected to find anything. Because not only is, is the environment completely inhospitable, but there's not much to basically eat there. None of the bacteria would actually have any sources of energy and would most likely just perish over time. But it turns out that there are at least two types of bacteria that were able to survive in these regions. The first was the extremophile bacteria known as Crucocidiopsis, which is usually able to survive in some of the most hostile conditions including high acidity, high temperature and so on. And we've even been able to establish that this bacteria could be perfect for us to take to Mars because it can actually easily photosynthesize in very inhospitable environments and create oxygen out of a red light or even far red light allowing us to grow oxygen and possibly even food from just a few small samples of this bacteria. We've also discovered the so-called Pseudomonas bacteria, which is able to convert a lot of different things into energy. And this bacteria is unfortunately one of those bacteria that occasionally also turns into a parasite, causing problems for humans and a lot of other animals. But it also happened to live really deep in the ocean underneath the crust. And the bacteria deep down there was actually able to either produce their own food from just a small amount of various organic molecules, or some of them were found a way to generate energy out of the actual minerals that were present deep down in the ocean. Now, there were not a lot of these bacteria. As a matter of fact, uh, the scientists estimate that the actual density is really, really low, meaning that there's approximately 2,000 or so bacteria per cubic centimeter, which is only about this big. But nevertheless, um, this already means that life can actually live in really, really weird conditions on planet Earth. And a lot of these bacteria were able to very effectively recycle and store all kinds of materials to be able to survive deep down there where nothing else can. And it seems that some of them were even able to survive on just a few partial amounts of organic matter that would seep through the cracks into the deep part of the oceanic crust. 
Now, not all of the bacteria needed that organic matter though. Some of it was actually surviving on some other materials that were already present. Which is of course great news for us if we were to try to discover life somewhere else in the solar system, such as for example Enceladus, the moon of Saturn that does seem to contain very similar conditions to what we've discovered in a lot of other parts of our planet. Just like so many other moons of other gas giants such as Titan, uh, Ganymede, Io and so on, a lot of these moons do seem to contain conditions that could easily support extremophile life coming from planet Earth. In other words, if I were to take one of these bacteria we found and then put them somewhere on this moon, possibly inside the moon actually, they would thrive there. They would survive with absolutely no problems. Or at least that's what we believe. It's very possible there's already a lot of life on those moons and we might even discover it in the next decade or so. But for now, discovering these extremophiles in these very inhospitable conditions has actually been only more support for the so-called existence of extraterrestrial life. Because obviously, if life can survive here, it will probably be able to survive on a lot of other objects in the solar system and possibly even other exoplanets out there in our galaxy, the Milky Way. Now personally, I still think that the best chance for us to find something is going to be right here on Titan, the other moon of Saturn, but until we actually launch the mission called Dragonfly in the next few years, we're not going to be able to know anything about this beautiful moon. Although in about 5 years or so, I might be talking about the discovery of life here after all, because this right now is the best source of unusual methane variation and a lot of other signs that suggest that something is causing the atmosphere of this object to change. And that something is probably bacterial life. But for now, that's all I wanted to mention in this video, and you can check out more about the study in the description below. Once we find life in some other inhospitable conditions, or discover something else unusual on our planet or outside of our planet, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt available in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.